In this example, we want to prove that the limit of 2x plus 5 as x approaches negative 3 is going to give us negative 1. Okay, so we want to do a formal proof here. So it's not good enough just to uh, substitute x equal negative 3 into the function. To, okay, and we get negative 1. So we have to do this formally. Okay, so we do this by using the formal definition of the limit. Okay, so we start with this statement that the absolute value f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Okay. So in our, uh, for our example, uh, we have that c, that c is minus 3. Our function is 2x plus 5, and l is negative 1. Okay. All right. So we start with this, just like we did in the previous example, and we want to get to the form of x minus c less than delta. Okay. So we're trying to find a, we're trying to find the value of delta in terms of epsilon. Okay, and once we have that, we can do a, a formal write-up of the proof. Okay, so we have uh, 2x plus 5 okay, minus negative 1, since, right, since L is minus 1. Okay, so from here, okay, we want... Right. We want to get to the form so we want the form of x minus c less than delta okay so that is corresponding to that delta neighborhood okay so we have 2x plus 6 okay less than epsilon Okay, so from here we can go ahead and factor out a 2. Okay, and then we can take the 2 outside the absolute value. Okay, and then from here we get x plus 3 less than epsilon over 2. Okay, so basically we have okay right we have this is nothing more than just x minus negative three less than epsilon over two okay so that's in the form of x minus c where c is negative three okay so that is the delta that we want to use okay so we want to use this for our delta we want to use delta epsilon over two okay Okay, so now we can do the formal write-up, okay? And so to do the formal write-up, we just basically reverse our steps. So we, we have to uh, basically declare our, our values, okay? So we want epsilon to be greater than zero, okay? Okay, that is the opening statement of our defi formal definition, okay? And we also want delta to be equal to epsilon over two. Okay, and we just solve for that. Okay, so now we start with, okay, so if, okay, so we have that, right, x minus, so x minus c, okay, in this case c is negative three, so we have x minus negative three. Okay, so we start with this part start with the delta neighborhood okay and we know delta is equal to epsilon over 2 okay then we just work backwards okay so we we can multiply through by 
uh, multiply both sides by two. Okay, so this is gonna give us two times the opposite value x minus negative three uh, less than epsilon over two, I'm sorry, uh, less than epsilon, since we already multiplied by two. And then we just plug, we just substitute or put two back into the absolute value. So we're gonna get x, okay, we're gonna get two times x plus three less than epsilon. Okay, so what we're trying to do now here is we're trying to get into uh, the form of f of x minus l less than epsilon, okay? All right, so this is going to be 2x plus 6 less than epsilon, okay? And then from here, okay, so just again going backwards okay so we had 2x plus 6 and this was coming from here so that is we have 2x plus 5 minus negative 1 okay less than epsilon okay and so and so that gives us what we need Okay, so now we have, right, this is, right, this is our function, okay, this is L, right, and we have epsilon. So we have the form of f of x minus L less than epsilon, okay, and that concludes our, our proof, okay, all right. So you always start with the, the neighborhood around epsilon, okay, around, sorry, around the, or the epsilon neighborhood. And then you, we get to the, we work through the algebra to get the, to get the corresponding delta neighborhood. And that will give us the value of delta. And then basically just reverse the steps, okay, and make sure you have to make sure that you declare your values. Okay, you have to make sure you, have, you always have to say that you want to let epsilon be stri strictly bigger than zero, and you want to define your what your delta is. Okay, all right. So again, this shows you the overall picture here is that if we have for any epsilon, we can always find a delta. In this case, we take half of it. So no matter how small L epsilon is, we can always find a delta just by taking half of it. In this case, okay, and. Again, that is the uh, formal proof of this limit.